Hi everyone, it is my absolute joy and pleasure to introduce Julia Balaz to you today. She's not only an astrologer, she is a very rare breed of galactic astrologers. I think there are barely half a dozen of those in the world. So um, a very, very select and specialized group. And for many years, she felt guided to meticulously study astrological charts after um, for clients after their QHHT and soul realignment sessions. Now, QHHT is quantum healing hypnosis therapy or technique, technique, technique. Um, and it was invented by Dolores Cannon, an extraordinary, um, extraordinarily evolved soul. So, um, this is where Julia and other practitioners can take their clients very, very deep in uh, and connect to their higher self and guides, et cetera, and bring, bring forward incredible information. So we're gonna be talking about that too. Um, but Julie was looking for proof about the higher self guidance and extraterrestrial connections that came up in so many of her sessions. And as a result of analyzing close to 2000 astrological charts from a galactic perspective, she feels called to share her research data, confirming epic cosmic orchestration and influence of celestial bodies on our lives, supporting our collective evolution. She's a passionate researcher of galactic astrology and soul's evolution, and she shares her fascinating discoveries in her online courses on starseeds.teachable.com and on her YouTube channel called Starseeds Teachable with Julia as well. And I'll put her information below this video. So welcome, Julia. Thank you so much, Pam. I've been seeing and feeling this conversation for so long, so I'm just over the moon to be here today. Thank you. Well, welcome. It's a, it's a great joy, as I say, and we're going to have some very different information, I think, coming through in this, in this conversation. And that's, that's always very exciting because I wouldn't call myself at all a galactic astrologer. So I'm going to be learning a lot as we go through this conversation as well. So just very simply, Julia, how did you get involved in astrology? And then we'll move on from there. Since the age of 11, I had my connection and sense of the higher self consciousness guiding me it was like a parallel consciousness living this life along with me and uh, I have been a nerd uh, reading books on esoterics and all kinds of topics related to metaphysics including alien stuff and witches and astrology was a big part of that too I loved in my teenage years uh, during my college years to actually dive deep into how I work how my mind ticks so it was very early on when I started being interested in and fascinated by astrology. Uh, so it was, I'm a self-taught astrologer, but very passionate. And uh, when I became a QHHT practitioner and started facilitating regression hypnosis sessions for my clients, I started at some point attracting clients that had connection with extraterrestrial beings. And when they regressed to some of their past lives or future parallel lives, they were describing planets that did not look like Earth. You know, different color skies, different conditions. It was obvious that it's not here, it's somewhere else. And there have been so many of them that I was just so fascinated. And because I was so used to astrology and because I was asking every single client of their astro details I then took time after their session to look at their chart and just go deeper and deeper and deeper I was, as you said looking for proof and I wasn't sure what I'm looking for but I just kept staring and looking and tuning into different things I think my major breakthrough happened when I realized first of all that we can track certain star system like Pleiades, Arcturus, all of them really with the zodiac degree. That was a first breakthrough. And then when I started noticing that clients who connected with very specific galactic race like the Pleiadians or Syrians, Arcturians in their session where they actually got the name as well, on that very date, there was either sun or moon or some of the major planets transiting that star system. In, in connection to their natal chart. So that was major. I actually was very emotional then. I just had goosebumps. I was floored from that discovery just to see the orchestration behind the scenes of 
you know, I choose a date for a client often many months ahead of mm -hmm. time. We have no idea. It just kind of happens so randomly, yet it's not random. You know, they come at a time when their major alignments in their natal chart are in alignment on the day of their session. And that's when a portal opens to higher consciousness and they can communicate with their aspects, perhaps from these other star systems or with collective from those star systems. So that just blew my mind and it changed my life forever. I just could not stop. And I kept looking and looking for more. <laughs> yeah, I can understand that. That would be very compulsive. So have you found um, in general that it's their personal planets which are aligned with these particular degrees? Or can it be the outer? Because if it's the outer planets, then it's going to be generational. Yes. Well, I believe that the outer planets are indicating our ancient soul origins, really the beginnings and really the archetypal energies that started our soul journey long, long, long time ago. So oftentimes when we have fixed stars aligned to these outer planets like Pluto, Neptune, Uranus, they people don't feel as connected to that frequency if it's not also aligned in their uh, earlier planets. And uh, yet it's still there and there is this flavor that is at the core of their being and especially with neptune the higher guidance coming from those fixed stars especially if it is nation like arcturians or andromedans syrians you know there's so many highly advanced races here so if those are conjuncting either neptune pluto uranus it's quite significant and always behind the scenes a, a guiding force of that person's life so i find that is the most ancient history and then the if we have sun moon and ascendant conjuncting the uh, certain fixed stars, then this feels always like the most recent incarnation, most recent connection, if the person incarnated there, or if in some other way they're connected. It, that, that feels very present and very strong, and they really are almost like embodying uh, the consciousness of that nation. You know, there are certain characteristics that define some of these well-known star nations, and you can really tell if that person has conjunct to sun, moon, or ascendant with any of these. So it's just mind blowing. You so do you ahead. find that um, some, you know, that, that one person could have um, se connections to several different star systems, yes. or is that always predominantly one? It's quite rare to have pure one nation star seed. Uh, there is a much smaller percentage of that, like having pure Andromedan, where they only have conjuncts to Andromedan star system and no other major fixed stars. I only have several of those uh, that I've seen. Most of people that I came across are what I call multi-galactic star seeds. You know, I believe at this time, because we are living in such special, extraordinary times because of a, all the influence of the celestial um, movements and bodies on Earth and this whole solar system, because of that special time in universal experience, we have, I could say, creme de la creme of high level souls consciousness incarnating on Earth at this time to support this major transformation. And I believe it's much bigger than just Earth upgrading and just human uh, DNA upgrading, I believe this is much bigger based on what I'm seeing. It feels to me like we have souls from all over the universe coming and incarnating here at this time, consciously going through the ascension process and going through a period of time when we recall our past lives in other star systems and especially the traumatic experiences and pain and, and whatever issues we experience when polarity was fighting and we are meant to heal it here consciously in our human DNA and in our soul DNA and transcend it and then send a ripple wave effect to the entire universe. I feel like the whole universe is upgrading with us. Mm. Yeah, that's so interesting because I, I, I've heard and I also have a strong sense that you know, Earth was apparently offline, um, not fully part of the galaxy for a long time, but we're now fully integrated and and all that i say in my videos about we are remembering that we are galactic citizens really seems to be echoed in the in the sessions you're having yes. very specifically as well which is wonderful and i have to say it happens to people from all walks of life i had clients who were doctors nurses um lawyers you know people who are really in the system farmers 
uh, teachers, everyone is going through these sudden epiphanies and suddenly they perceive life differently. Suddenly they are aware of so much more than before, but they're all quiet. They're all in the closet awakening because they think that if they start talking about their experiences that people will call them crazy, you know? We're used to that, aren't we, as astrologers? That's, you know, same old. um, Amazing. So do you have a sense, Julia, also therefore, that the galactic beings are actually aiding this transformation? Yes. Because this whole thing about free will. So how do you feel about that? Yes, very much so. But they come from such a loving, compassionate and wise, incredibly wise place. I There seem to be safety pins in place everywhere. And it really is just about frequency. Uh, you know, that they the frequency is here. And whenever you are ready to meet it halfway, then it starts opening you up. So they don't... Um, force it it's it's available and you come whenever you're ready so it's very loving divine mother father presence through these higher dimensional beings that i'm seeing that's that's so exciting isn't it that's uh, just so exciting to feel um almost held by those galactic beings who are operating at a much higher level than we are currently on on earth. So that's really wonderful. So can you give us some examples of these different um, star systems and how they affect people's lives, Julia? Yes, absolutely. So one of the most loving and compassionate energies is coming through the Arcturus uh, fixed Mm. star. And uh, if you find 24 degrees of Libra in around 24 degrees of Libra aligned to any of your natal planets, you have conjunction of uh, Arcturian star system. And what I find with people who have these, this alignment prominent in their chart, they have this compassionate heart and ability to feel into others and help others heal emotionally as well. Many of these alignments become activated after the age of 30, 40, for my generation and previously. However, now it's becoming much earlier awakenings. Younger and younger people are connected. But um, the Arcturian star seeds, they really are here and they feel re- deeply called to assist others to heal emotionally. They're really, there's something about this Arcturian frequency. It's like a golden light, the Christ consciousness. They really carry it within them. And they don't even have to say anything. They just are. And their presence feels like coming home. So people really heal in their presence. And you'll find many healing practitioners who will have Arcturian alignment in their chart. I've seen it so many times. That's so interesting. And what orb do you use, Julia, for the conjunction? Uh, Within the Arcturus, the orb is 2.4 two degrees, 40 minutes. Yeah, so it's quite tight, quite a yeah. tight orb. That's really interesting. It's um, it's it's almost, it, it, it's quite similar to Chariclo archetype, mm-hmm. Chariclo energy. You know, the ability to hold sacred space and silently heal, um, mm-hmm. which is very loving, which yeah. is really beautiful. I do want to point out opposing alignments. They too matter. And what I find is that if it's an opposing uh, alignment, then the energy of the fixed star is sleeping, is almost like dormant until the age of 30, 40, because we found that if it was conjunct in that, with, for that particular person who incarnated into very dense environment, very toxic family dynamic, it would be too much for them to hold conjunct energy, fully integrated Arcturian frequency. It would just be too much of a contrast. It would it would be very difficult. So it's op- it's in opposition instead. And when they become an adult and start awakening, then they're able to handle and integrate that fixed star energy fully. So then it. It is That's so interesting. I've actually got a conjunction and an opposition. So this is really, this is really fascinating. A very tight orb. Um, that's absolutely fascinating. Yeah, and we can feel it. it feels very angelic that frequency as well. And uh, you certainly have that. Oh, bless you. <laughs> and 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 what about the Syrian um, frequency? I Jill? find many Syrian star seeds have are also called to be of service as healers, but they see, their focus seems to be more on the physical body issues, healing. Of course, they're connected to the emotional, but they are more like the physicians or acupuncturists, and uh, it, it's more about the physical. And uh, oftentimes also called to be teachers. They are very passionate about studying and then teaching higher consciousness. 
all of them really the Syrians are always into uh, metaphysical and esoterics and um, Buddha consciousness Christ consciousness and they would have had many past lives as either uh, scribes or teachers priests they would be teaching higher consciousness on earth for aeons for a really long time so there are collective um, galactic themes that we are seeing people living through it's like an echo of their past lives it's happening in their current life especially if they experience a lot of opposition in their past lives you know they were bringing in higher consciousness but they were cut down by the service to self forces and so in this life they're called again but yet there's this block to talking about higher consciousness because fear of either losing their life like they did in previously or um, really didn't just they're guided to heal these old traumas and uh, come out again but this time more gracefully where it's not forced teaching it's you know i'm here if you need me and uh, take what you can <laughs> and leave, leave the rest so it's becoming much more graceful and compassionate teaching from our light workers this time wow. around and what's the degree and the sign for syrian so for sirius a it is 14 degrees zero five minutes 14.05 or in around 14 degrees of cancer for conjunct the or yeah yeah that's yes of course yes absolutely and opposition would be capricorn yeah and the orb is also 2.4 these are quite large stars with a huge magnitude so yeah mm -hmm. wow and you you principally find it serious a rather than serious b Yes, uh, mostly with this case and also the series A star seeds, they would always almost always have connections or recollection of past lives in either Atlantis or ancient Egypt or Mesopotamia. They, they just have these, you know, certain fixed stars are really linked to certain eras in our history. It's quite fascinating too. Wow, that's, yeah, <laughs> we could go down so many rabbit holes here. I know. <laughs> and, and what about, uh, the Pleiades as well, which I think is more common with people. Yes, very. So, and that nation, that uh, collective is very active in supporting our collective evolution of consciousness. So if you have high degrees of Taurus, 29 degrees of Taurus or early degrees of Gemini, you will have conjunction to some of the Pleiadian uh, fixed stars. And with these, I find that they are much more vocal, much more outgoing, more extrovert-like and very positively focused. They always see the better side of everything. They will give many chances to people who disappointed them. They just want to see the best and, uh, and help building the new world. Um, very involved in communications. We'll see them often as influencers, very outspoken, outgoing, and high, high energy, yeah. And what about Draco? Because I think we often think that Dracos are the are the kind of baddies um, mm. uh, a bit, but you haven't found that, have you? you? I'm so glad you're bringing it up because it has such a bad reputation. Yes, there are the lower octaves of uh, Draco constellation with uh, the reptiles and service to self that I see as narcissist people. But from people that come to me and whoever had conjunct Draco, they are connecting to these ancient mythical creatures, the dragon beings, the guardians of peace, harmony, and balance of this universe. And before they even knew that they had Draco conjunct in their chart, they would say that uh, they had either in their meditation, they met this beautiful dragon being golden or purple or blue, and it took them on a ride to other uh, star system, or they somehow connected to the mythology. And some of them would even have a dragon tattoo and I believe this dragon, ancient dragon energy is awakening on earth. I'm, I see it through so many people. So I that would be 70 and higher, really higher dimensional, multidimensional consciousness that is that has this frequency of guardian and protector. And like they will not let anyone manipulate them. You know, they'll see through. Fascinating. And, and what's the degree for, for Draco? Yeah, so Tuban Draco, the Alpha Draco, is seven degrees point twenty seven, and the orb here is only one degree. Okay, of which sign? Of Virgo, the conjunct. So seven twenty seven of Virgo, and this is based on year two thousand. So you need to 
multiply, yeah. you need to multiply 0 0.838 per year. Either. So it's, a, it's a 72 years to, to move one degree. Yes. So we calculate um, 7.27 of Virgo. You need to add 0 0.838 times 0 0.838 of how many years since your birth year. So if you were born in um, 1970s, minus 2000 is 30 years, so you need to do 30 times 0 0.838, then you get the degree or minutes, you need to calculate the difference. But if it's in a round, you know, you still have that influence, so. Right, and, and is there any sort of comprehensive um, list of, of the years and the degrees from astro.com and the advanced settings or anything like that? Yeah, so if you go, for example, to the website that we created to help people identify their alignments for free to find quick answers and validations they're looking for, you can go to starseedsastrology.com. Starseeds is plural, starseedsastrology.com, and then go to Astro Degrees tab. And there you will see all the most common fixed stars listed based on your 2000. Then you put in a different year that you're interested about and it'll recalculate everything for you. You can do it there or just put in your birth details and get a whole uh, chart calculated for you automatically. Wow, that's really, really fascinating. And this may be a very difficult question for you to answer, Julie, but do you have a sense that the galactic beings are more present now than they have been in, in the recent past? more and more so especially i would say even for the last two 20 years decades certainly and it's becoming more and more prominent it's just it's the quantity of people is growing they've been involved for quite some time now but it was scattered it, just very few people had the ability to reach that level of consciousness but now it's like a ball is the snowball is rolling and it's becoming bigger and bigger in terms of quantity of people that are able to perceive them now they were here all the time but now we can perceive them because of the extra light quotient that we are receiving physically yeah, because of the awakening it was so interesting what you were saying about draco and the dragon energy because if i followed the work of rory duff for some years and he talks a lot about the dragon emperor energy lines wake awakening yes. um, and they've been doing that just over the last few years and um, that in ancient prophecy is very much linked to um, this massive um, evolution that we're going through, this mm -hmm. huge ascension. Um, and that's so interesting that you're picking it up from your modality as well. And now, especially in the last three months, I would say it's popping up almost with every other client. It's really coming up and it, they're coming through their dreams, through the session, through meditation, through just interest into dragon uh, mythology and they start reading about it and they would have goosebumps. There are just so many synchronicities around it that, uh, and certain light workers who have this very strong dragon energy, they're called to now teach uh, their, the alchemy, what, how you know you can work with these archetypal energies, really they're archetypal energies and they show up as dragon being, um, whatever helps our brain to comprehend it. But if we drop all the labels and all the, form then it's just frequency light sound yeah yeah absolutely well wow. so do you feel that the draco energy is also linked to a stronger sense of our sovereignty yes oh my goodness such a great point have goosebumps with that yes that was the number one when i integrated that energy it was that and you when you when it works with you when it happens the activation of that sovereign frequency archetypal frequency people when they go through that and it was certainly my experience you become huge and you feel the scales and you feel the wings and you feel like no more deception and you just want to <laughs> chase the service to self to the corner and say no more not under my wings not under my not in my presence and you just want to protect it's everyone it, it's really, um, there's almost a sense of invincibility yes. that you know, is coming through there it's arising in so many people. So this is also, um, you know, such a beautiful manifestation of the change, the transformation, and eventually the service to self and the manipulators and toxic people, they will not be able to be here because we see through them. We, we don't hold space for that anymore. We don't need to be taught about sovereignty anymore because now we understand it we integrate it we hold it we embody it so um, i believe that frequency of toxic um, behavior is going to leave the planet 
yeah, absolutely. And yeah. there's a sense almost of magic about some of these star systems, isn't there? I mean, this is absolutely not 3D. This is minimum 5D and beyond because it's just magical and transformational and can shape shift in a moment. That's that's the yeah. feeling. Um, quantum is really the best word for it because it is multi-dimensional and multi-timeline as well. We see how the synchronicities are happening that the higher self of the person was leaving clues to awakening throughout the life. And there are messages in childhood and teenage years. There are, you know, once you find a validation of your fixed star connection, and when you recall your life, you will find clues like little pearls throughout your life. So, do you, you know, almost like the Vedic astrologers using the, the moon's um, mm -hmm. nodal axis as being dominant in somebody's birth chart, are you really seeing any um, conjunctions or positions to these star systems as being the dominant thing that you look for in a chart now? We do look at it holistically and we do pay attention to the nodes very much so and to MC as well, because if there are major fixed star alignments to meet heaven and to nodes, then this person deeply feels passionate about fulfilling their mission. They feel like they're here on a mission and they're here to help the collective and they become very engaged in assisting others in, in their awakening in whatever way it happens, of course, after their own uh, awakening and healing. But whenever there are fixed stars to nodes or to mid heaven, that person is becoming much more prominent in terms of influence over the collective That's awakening. So interesting, Julia, because as you know, my second book was all about the notes. It was nice to hear you say that, but you know, I, I really see, our yeah. yeah, you know, I really see that nodal axis, the north node as the compass needle 100%. for the life in terms of in order to feel fulfilled at the soul level, you have to head towards that compass needle. And with QHHD sessions, when we tap into past lives, that was one of the things that fascinated me before the galactic astrology opened. It was seeing that the nodes are present in past lives. So the south node is experiencing wow. past lives. So client didn't know about their nodes, but they were recalling past lives that then I saw this is totally the south node energy. So yeah. That's wonderful uh, validation. That's what you know, because that's been the theory, but to actually sort of see that in evidence with clients is wonderful validation. Um, gosh, that's so yeah. exciting. It was one of the most um, heartwarming experience for me over and over to see that even though people have no clue about their astrology, the map is inside their heart, inside their soul, and their higher self is guiding them, navigating them through life based on exactly what's in their chart. I, I find that so magical and so soothing, you know? Mm, that's so interesting. So almost, you know, our regular bread and butter planets, I see, well, it's so, I could go in so many directions to it. Yeah. Because we're so precise about the time, the birth time, I've often thought, is it that the regular birth chart with our regular bread and butter planets, that birth chart is principally for our 3D linear time lifetime. But what you are looking at is a whole other layer of, um, of the soul over many lifetimes. Yeah. And that's what's so fascinating. And not only on Earth, but also in other star systems that is also there. Wow. The, the chart really feel to me, it looks like infinite quantum technology that, it, you know, I still feel like only scratch the surface and there's so much we already discovered. And yet every week in our group conversations with other fellow enthusiasts, we are opening more and more. It's just it's never ending, but it really is cosmic. And it's wonderful to see that our brains can comprehend it now. We are really opening up like never before. Wow. And are there any other star systems that you, you, you find are coming through very strongly in, in sessions? Julie? Yes. Orion is so present throughout, you know, in so many charts. And there are some the lower uh, frequency Orion star systems that are service to self, but many are higher uh, evolved Orion uh, beings that are really helping with integrating polarity and most of all with healing the trauma and the deception and pain of manipulation that was upon us for so long. So it seems that a lot of Orion beings are helping to free us from some of the issues that started in Orion and beyond that. We go even further back to Lyra. We have a lot of Lyran teams, embodiments here on Earth. They're all really 
quite present. It's very, very multi-galactic. These 54 uh, stars that I have listed, there, there are many more. And I, I teach it in the course. We have a whole lesson on advanced one when we look at all the others and also galaxies, because we also have people from different galaxies and you can see stargates in their chart or galactic center conjunctions in their chart. And that is a whole other story. It all matters. There's, it all <laughs> plays a role, so. Wow, and Orion, what is the degree and sign for Orion, Julia? So for Orion, we have uh, Gemini. There, there are several stars. So um, second deacon of Gemini, all, all of it is uh, different Orion fixed stars from Intaka to Alnila, Mesa. You know, it's all on the, on that website. If you go to Star yep. Astrology and click on the Astro Degrees tab, you can print out a PDF of the full list and you will see even trines and six thousand squares because I found they also matter. There is just... Wow. And as you probably know, I'm getting very interested in the Kuiper Belt objects um, mm -hmm. as well. And do you have a view on those? Because I, I guess, you know, if you put everything, the, the fixed stars, the asteroids, the Kuiper, everything's such a blizzard, you can't read anything at all. So we have to be very precise and selective about our particular practice and what works for the client. Yeah, what I always say to the fellow practitioners is to always, you know, when you're looking at someone's chart, see where your natural curiosity is taking you when your intention is to bring whatever is most relevant for the person right now, then you will zoom in on certain elements. Personally, we haven't yet um, looked and researched uh, the Kuiper belt objects. Yeah. yeah. And uh, um, it's it feels like the next stage. So um, yes, very. Uh, that's what I'm personally very excited about because they really are bringing in a new level of consciousness for us. Yeah. And I do believe that we only discover them when we're ready to integrate that level of consciousness. And they also are quantum. That their archetypes are quantum. They're not three D. They're not effort pushing logic. Um, yes. they're, they're jumps. You set a clear intention. You focus. You release it to the universe. And hey presto, things manifest for you and that's that's where we are and where we're headed how we to explore so, that there are two more that i would like to mention that are awakening just like the dragon energy also hydra uh, star system and the fixed star in particular alfard it's at 27 degrees of leo in around and the orb is 2.20 the anyone that had conjunct hydra they have past lives connected to uh, india and asia and connection to these um uh, they're called nagas, snake people, uh, half gods, demigods, shapeshifters, multidimensional beings. Some of them are tricksters, but those that came to me, they're connected to their higher con consciousness. And th these being uh, um, humans that have connection to Hydra as conjunct, they are naturally able to perceive multidimensionally. They really are wired since their earlier years to tap to quantum stuff. So that's one. And then Origa Capella, Origa star constellation, Capella star system at 2150 of Gemini, also orb at 2.40. Anyone conjuncting this, they seem to have past lives connected to ancient Mayans culture, mm -hmm. to the uh, South America and Aztecs and all that. And they would naturally be interested in astrology as well. So I find that fascinating too. There's, wow. so, many. There's so many. But you, you, you mentioned you're bringing in the squares as well. Yes, I find. So when there are squares, and again, you have to look at it holistically and look for further clues confirming that that square actually is some karmic uh, issue that needs to be brought up, ex re experience again. There'll be some challenges connected to that fixed star either past lives of that person or some karmic soul connections from people from that star system. So for example, if it's square Orion, then that person, and it's the if it's the lower frequency of the Orion one, service to self, Dracos, reptiles, and really the narcissistic personality type of people, they will have a lot of these in their environment. If they have a lot of squares to Orion, then they then just confirm, yeah, I've my whole team is dealing with narcissists and stepping into my sovereignty. And then they will also have the higher alignments of um, like Draco conjunct, where they start building the sovereignty. Um, Arcturians, Syrians, they have other higher vibrational beings supporting them, you know, transcending the loop of 
being manipulated by service to self. So it seems to me like there is a massive orchestration of several different star nations that are working through millions of individuals and it's all orchestrated. That's so exciting because it really does give evidence for the divine plan. Yes. And what we're living through right now. I've seen it. And it's, it, when you really see it, you cannot but just cry and bow down in awe and gratitude. It, yeah. It's epic what is happening. Yeah, and it's unstoppable. That's what I find so exciting. So if we watch the nightly news, which I haven't <laughs> done for 27 months, but if we do, we can get so drawn into that. That is our reality and there is nothing else. There's no escape. It's all it's dread. Past. It's the past. But if we can, you know, tear ourselves away from that and, and look to the divine plan and the kind of things you're talking about, it's so exciting because we're just riding a wave. And the faster we all get on that wave, the faster it's going to arrive. Because, yes, Pluto is still grinding its way through the last two, three degrees of Capricorn and, and really, I think, excavating that, that old dark world. And um, I think things will start to lighten up in March 2023 when Pluto moves into Aquarius, but, but much more when it moves in fully, mm -hmm. November, December 24. Um, then I think there's a, there's a real energetic shift because several of the, the outer plants, as you know, Julia, are shifting sign at that time. And it's really remarkable that we've got a whole cascade of outer planets shifting sign at the same time between kind of 23 and 26, uh, 2023, 2026. And that's very unusual because they've got very long orbits and cycles. And in Rory Duff's work, again, he sees that in December 24, we enter 200 years of harmony with regard to the Earth's energy lines. It's so fascinating. You know, I held a group regressions uh, with for QHHD just as a playful, uh, you know, first time experience. And we looked at the future lives. So we regressed into future and each participant had a choice of choosing 100, 200 or 300 years from now. Most of them chose 200 years from now. And they all saw Earth with peace. One of them even saw this huge... Um, uh, board somewhere in the middle of a country saying that these were all the countries that signed the peace treaty and that this is a proclamation of peace on earth as an example. Uh, they saw smaller communities and uh, technology as well, but the technology was supporting the everyday human life, including using sound for frequency, for uh, well-being, enhancing atmosphere inside the house and also in the garden, for example. One mm -hmm. of them saw a baby crib that was very high tech and it was uh, regulating the temperature in the crib, the quality of the air and all these things. It was very high tech, but very much also part of the nature mm -hmm. and smaller communities. And it was just so magical. Um, that's really beautiful because, you know, that's the dividing line, isn't it? Yes. Is it in harmony with nature or is it not? That, and we're on a slippery slope at the moment and we've got to use great discernment. But for me, that's the dividing line. Mm. Is it in harmony with nature? I'd love to talk to you, Julia, and ask you about if there are any common themes coming up in the QHHT sessions, which are deep, deep hypnosis, aren't they? Because, uh, you know, another QHHT practitioner has talked about some of the common themes that are emerging about ascension and where we're headed. So can you share your experience with that yes so when the higher selves are connecting with the consciousness of the human uh, the message always always is especially when the clients come with the question about should i worry about this or that that is currently happening the message is always unanimous from all the higher selves to not uh, give into fear and projections of the mass media completely just let it go and be at peace because the guidance is within. So they always say, when you raise your frequency, you will we will help you navigate whatever reality will present will be presented in your immediate environment because you have this higher frequency and connection to the higher self. You will be able to navigate it safely and wonderfully and magically. So that's your key to, you know, no matter the doom and gloom, you can always. It feels like parallel reality. That's what the higher selves are guiding us all to live in that higher frequency safely 
and abundantly as well. And also then it's about following the joy and excitement that has been such a strong message with so many sessions. They always show them something that really excites their heart and thrills their soul. And then they just need to follow that. And then when they come back a year later and they say, yeah, you know, my life has completely changed because I said yes to that calling. It's follow your joy, follow your excitement. That's what I did. And magic is happening. Wow. And, and it seems, and I, you know, the, 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 actually, those are the things I've said in my videos as well that I've just sensed, but there's a sense of our realities becoming much more individual going forwards than they have ever been yeah. and much more um, diverse, perhaps, than they've ever yeah. been on Earth. They say be at peace with that, with seeing that variety and it's okay. We don't need to fight it. We don't need everyone to change. Just focus on you and that's how you contribute. That's how you do. There, there are two more themes that I want to mention and in particular for males and female clients. So female clients are taken to connect and they're inspired to connect with other females and set up groups where they talk and share and heal and laugh and cry together as a group of females. And then the ancestral lineages of females are coming and joining them on the other side. And then male clients are guided. I had several with the same experience spontaneously without me mentioning it, Several were guided to come together with other men and create their brotherhood. They say that, you know, they've been sad and, uh, you know, had all kinds of addictions because they disconnected from that frequency of brotherhood and being feeling connected to the fathers before them. But now these ancient deep ancestors are coming back to support and and uh, recreate the healthy chain and so everyone is encouraged once you tap into that frequency of divine masculine you are then called to step out and bring others to the circle and rise together goosebumps so yeah, yeah that has been happening yeah that's quite tribal as well isn't it i mean many ancient tribal communities still still do that kind of practice mm -hmm. very much so and do you find there's any commonality julie in what people are describing in those hypnosis um, sessions? What, what are they seeing in their future? Yeah, so it's always the homecoming feeling that they're all equally emotional about and it's either golden light or blue light or green light, whatever is the frequency of their soul when they experience sense of acceptance, total acceptance and just bliss and uh, deep healing and home just knowing that this is who they really are this is where they truly come from and once you grasp it experientially and feel it in your heart you kind of accept it as who you are and where you come from everything just falls away as just an illusion of the past conditioning of the past and then they just start shining brightly and recreate the reality in a much higher frequency so that has been pretty standard with people you know connecting and Awesome. There's a sense almost of the past just turning to dust that you, you can barely remember it. It just dissolves and crumbles away and you're stepping into something so different. Yes. You, you don't take those memories with you. That's my sort of sense of it. Yes. And many people in our conversations, uh, you know, through before they go under, they talk about that, that they really struggle remembering uh, the past and previous. It just really feels like what you just described there and that it's irrelevant and really just... It's about moving forward now. Wow. And I guess we are all moving forwards at different speeds, depending on our soul contract and, and our journey, et cetera, and our free will, of course. So some people are already there. Others are sort of the fast track at Heathrow. And again, no judgment here because everybody's on their own individual journey. But again, do you have a sense of that? Yes, such a great point. Thank you. I keep saying, and it's being passed as a message to higher selves as well, to not compare yourself to others because you have no idea about their soul contracts, their timing. And whenever you awaken, that's a perfect time because people that you are going to be assisting, uh, healing, awakening, growing, they are still fast asleep and they will awaken just after you. So it's always about you helping those that are a few steps behind you or inspiring people that are a few steps behind you. That's all that matters you already know enough for those that are a few steps behind you yeah no comparisons wow that feels so exciting because your work really suggests this is this is happening right here right now and yes of course i can see it in in my own astrology i mean not my personal astrology the astrology that i'm working with all the time 
but because you've got this different perspective from the star systems as well, that gives you just additional reassurance of, of where we're headed, yeah. essentially. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So we look at the transits as well. Right? We find that whenever you have, say you have conjunct to certain star system, look at the transit. When is that star system going to be conjunct, the sun or the moon? And that's the best time for you to meditate if you want to connect with the consciousness of your aspect, perhaps from that star nation or you know if you feel called to the Pleiadians or Arcturians if you want to kind of download the wisdom and love always have a specific intention of why you want to connect uh, to be clear on that but during transits it's uh, usually people have spontaneous recollection of their other aspects so so you find it with fast moving planets like the sun and the moon yes. as opposed to the slower moving planets yes so people who would have alignments to sun or moon or Mercury as well, that's also going quite fast, they seem to awaken to their galactic aspect faster because the transits are happen happening so often in their life. So, yeah. you yeah. know, uh, but and then transits that are, or the planets that are distant and have slow movements, they are being integrated. The frequency of that big star is integrated at the later age. Yeah. Yeah, that's so interesting. And have you found, as we find in normal astrology, that the transiting, the archetype of the transiting planet has a particular influence? Yes. You know, Jupiter um, is extremely expansive with Uranus. It's even more um, kind of out there galactically, mm -hmm. even more futuristic, etc. Yes, very much so. We consider all that the planetary flavor, the zodiac flavor, the deacon's flavor. We look at it all as very comprehensive when when we do a proper galactic astrology soul reading. Yeah, we look at it all because it all matters. Yeah. Wow, that is so wonderful. And it must be enormously enriching for people to yeah. understand their galactic heritage. Yes, it changes their life. It really is transformation. Uh, just the comments, even just seeing their charts. Some, for many people, it's enough to just see the connection because they knew, they felt, or they were told by psychics that, yeah, they have Arcturian connection, but there was still doubt. But then when they see it in their chart, they start crying, their body releases, um, you know, tension, and then they just feel so much more at peace and ready to embody that frequency fully without self-doubting. You know, so wow, and it, because it, as you say, it really makes the nodal axis come alive. Mm. Like we're not just, you know, we haven't just arrived for this lifetime by accident and, and shuffle into dust at the end. Of it. You, we're, we're looking at something truly galactically magnificent. Um, mm. And that's what is immensely exciting. And it it makes our evolution feel even more positive, even more exciting, even more imminent than it did before we started this conversation. Absolutely, yes. There is one more theme and message that I would like to uh, share with uh, people, and that is this emergence of the Aquarian model for communities yeah. and uh, how important it is to find your tribe, whatever you're passionate about, whatever topic it is, doesn't have to be astrology, it could be anything, but when you find the tribe, you know, group of like-minded people that come together with passion and excitement and playfulness. The gift in that is creation of the collective group mastermind, I call it, because that's what we are experiencing as galactic astrologers in my community, that the sparks of new ideas that are emerging in the conversations is something that we would have never considered if you were alone studying at home but it's just you're elevating everyone to in, in a quantum leaps. It's uh, each week when we have our calls, something amazing emerges and we are all just blissed out with it. So find your tribe and look for a frequency of group collective where there is no really leader, where the leader is encouraging all to be leaders, where it's, you know, togetherness, this level, not this level, then it's magical. Mm. Yeah, that's so, because again, I've been talking about this, uh, you know, a lot in the videos that Aquarius is, is all about community, collaboration, it's grassroots up, it's no longer top down, because we're done, absolutely done, done, done with that. And uh, about finding your family of frequency. Yeah. And, 
and there's a kind of vortex of energy that becomes exponential when you're in those groups because we are all of like mind we're all supporting each other's ideas it's very positive it's very creative and regenerative and yeah I mean I'm experiencing that myself I'm lucky enough to be in a quite a big group of like-minded people and it's just life-changing actually it really is to share to bounce off people I do and also the human contact having been deprived of it in lockdown for so long is so precious and it's something we might have taken for granted in our lives that you meet with other you bounce up against other human beings but but now it's it's a precious jewel um, that we will never take for granted ever ever again in our lifetimes I think and to to have that sharing but also that kind of multiplicity or vortex that happens in a group is yeah that's the quantum leap it's not linear it's the quantum leap i want to point out in terms of galactic astrology we didn't mention the houses the houses also matter the frequency of that consciousness will be most activated in certain house whatever alignment is there uh, in natal chart so if perhaps in your seventh house house of relationships or the 11th house of greater collective you have maybe pleiades or whatever fixed star system when you start meeting souls that are star seeds from that star system you become activated and just elevated to the next level that is also in the chart it's all there Wow. I mean, already astrology is like a kind of 97th dimensional jigsaw, but you, you know, once you add in the galactic side, it's it's just, yes, yeah, quite, it's quite boggling. I mean, that's, you can that's... get lost in it, but I always say whenever anyone gets anxious about it, it's time to just let it all go, go for a walk and just be present in the here and now, enjoy the present moment. It, it's all good. It, at the end of the day, it comes to, you know, embodying love and peace. So. Absolutely. And also, as you say, to set a clear intention, whatever is for the highest good of the client to be called through in that yeah. session, just to allow you to focus on that yeah. one thing. Exactly. Wow. So anything else you'd like to share with us, Julia? This has been so rich. I would just say from knowing when people start looking at their charts and at the report at the starseedsastrology.com and they see all these many alignments and really busy chart, it, it can be quite overwhelming and you really want to know it all you need to be okay with not knowing it all right away. It's a long journey. It takes many months, even years of self-discovery and uncovering piece of the puzzle after piece of the puzzle. So just be patient with it. It'll all come to you in the right time. Just think of it as a map that you just received and now be playful about discovering different aspects, different areas of that map. Just take your time with it. It's okay to not know it all, all at once. You know, it's, it's a journey. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that's really important because even even with normal astrology, that takes years to be yes. competent. Yeah. It really does. It's so it's it's so vast as a language. It's like French cubed. You know, there's so much to there's yeah. so much to know. So yes, and and just take. It's almost like skiing. You know, you can enjoy it at any level, whether you're a beginner or you, you, you're a beautiful so you've done black yeah. runs. So, um, and just every every piece is special every piece savor every piece of learning that you get on that journey and i just want to say that i am not able physically time-wise do personal readings anymore the list the waiting list was insanely long and i just had to at some point stop and say no because i'm committed now to supporting hundreds of students it's very time consuming Uh, but you know supporting also the practitioners of galactic astrology soul reading that are coming through the certification course who are wonderful gifted astrologers and uh, soul readers they're all listed on my website now and many more are coming there are people who are dedicating all their time to study charts like I did and then offer that service to others and there are different types of readings that you can get so if if you find it overwhelming then see if you can book a session with one of the galactic astrologers yeah wonderful this has been a really rich and absolutely fascinating discussion julia so thanks so much for for sharing it with us is there anything like else you'd like to say before we go thank you so much for everything you do i have to say your two books were at the beginning of my journey before i came out as galactic astrologer i remember i think it was early 2018 I've read so many i read hundreds of uh, astrology books i have them on on listed on my in my course, but it was something about your two books that the frequency and the flavor that you put in that inspired me to come out, like stop hiding or stop doubting myself because I haven't studied astrology 
uh, professionally with certain, you know, official body. So th there was always that element of, you know, I can't, but something in your book helped me to say, just, I'm not going to hide. I'm just going to go anyway. for it. <laughs> yeah, do it anyway. And magic happened as a result of that. So I'm so grateful. And I keep recommending your books to all my uh, fellow enthusiastic galactic astrologers. They're marvelous. There's so much information there and it's a wonderful place to start. So I encourage anyone to look them up. Yeah, thank you so much for that. Well, I can't take much credit. I think they came through me rather than from me. It but... felt like it. Yes, yeah. it was very high frequency channel text to me anyway. It felt wow. like. It. Well, that's thank you so much for saying. I'm just so pleased that it's helped you on your journey. That's become just so evolved now. This has been a really, really fascinating discussion, Julia. And just thank you so much for your time. And I'm sure you can have a lot of interest on your website. And But as Julia said, she's no longer doing one to ones, but she has a list of other practices that you can go to so just want to really thank you um just thank you from the bottom of my heart for sharing all of that information today thank you much love everyone take care much love everybody bye for now